What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is Hawk Talk on Melrose going back and looking at the Iowa win last night against Michigan State 26-16. We're recording this on Sunday afternoon. Both Tyler and I got back from Iowa City. Um, yes, well, today for me, morning. For you last night, very late. Boy, what a great day, though. It was a awesome tailgate experience. The game itself for the first like three quarters kind of sucked, but that fourth quarter, like Kinnick was rocking. That felt like the Iowa Penn State game in 2021. Obviously, implications not as extreme as this one, but um, it was so loud. And I'm honestly surprised my voice is like pretty normal because we both you and I were cheering pretty loud there. So, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, how's your Sunday going? Well, technically, I got back today as well. I got back at 12:28 in the morning. So, uh, it's true. You never, you know, just just to throw that out there. But no, I'm I'm obviously the game was. Like you said, the the second half of the fourth quarter was unbelievable. Just the fact that the circumstances in which that played out for Iowa was, I mean, you couldn't even script it any better. So yeah. it was it was awesome. I agree. It's like <clears throat> the implications weren't the same, but man, it, I had flashbacks to that to that Penn State game. Just with the false starts in the north end zone, just the the big plays late. Um, the crowd being into it as as it was, it, it was awesome. Yeah, it was like the last like eight minutes of that game. Like, um, I think when we kicked the field goal to make it 16-16, about then on, it was just like, yeah. it was awesome. And uh, well, and God, I mean, maybe we'll talk about it, but it's like it could have went a different way there. When we were down sixteen to thirteen, we had that batted ball, and it looked like it should have been a pick for Michigan. Oh, State. I forgot about that. Yeah, and he just dropped it. And ever since then, it was 13 points just like that for Iowa. And uh, yeah, or, or 10 points, 10 or 13. I can't remember. 13, which, 13, which, yeah. which is funny because it's like we we can score 13 yeah. like this, but sometimes it's yeah. like it takes like two games to, to point, score 13 we, points. Right. Up until that point, we only had 13. So it was, yeah, yeah it was crazy. Um, but it was just, it, it could have went so much differently. And obviously, very, very glad it didn't. So. Yeah, it, it was a big game simply off the fact, and we'll talk about it, obviously, with Cade's injury. It almost felt like with Cade's injury, and then let's say we would have lost, I feel like how like much of a yeah. damper would that have been like the rest of the way? At least like we won. It like you feel good. I mean, despite the injury, you, you had you, something to cheer for. Yeah, for sure. and um, the season's, you know, still, you know, much alive. And obviously with the Big Ten West, it, you know, any team can, can win the West yeah. with how bad yeah. the Big Ten West is. Um, but – that was a much needed win because it, it really felt like if we would have lost that game, it would have been just so bad because not only did we see our quarterback one get hurt, but then we would have lost just not would have been good. Would not have been good. So I'm, I'm no, so happy. Not we, that team For sure. Yeah, no, especially a team that doesn't have a head coach right now. I mean, they yeah. played really good. I both of, you know, you and I were talking about that when we were leaving the stadium, I thought yeah. despite all the distractions that have happened, I thought they did a really good job getting this team ready to go and they looked good. Um, minus really the turnovers by Noah Kim and then minus the penalties. I think they had, yeah, they had 10 penalties for 94 yards like that. You can't really do that on the road and they had four turnovers. So, um, but yeah, looking at the stats real quick, I don't really like, you know, talk about the stats cause it gets kind of boring, but just real quick. Um, if you look at the box score, once again, it's, and it seems like every Iowa game, it's this way. <clears throat> when you look at the box score and you don't know the final score, you would think the other team easily won. And in this case, similar thing, they had, over a hundred more yards than us. Um, they had five more first downs. They had uh, about eight minutes more of time of possession, but really what killed them was the turnovers. Now you and I were saying yesterday, we felt like they were getting like every third down conversion. I, I, I felt like it, but yeah. Yeah. They it went three a, for 15, which I was, I was shocked by that. Maybe it was just the moment that it was in. I, I don't know. It. I, I swear, like I was telling you, during the game, like we were sitting next to each other and I'm like, it just felt like it was every third down conversion they were getting. And maybe it was the three, maybe it was like three in a row that, that made me think that, I don't know. I guess I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but no, they actually didn't convert very well on third down. Yeah. And for Iowa, you know, we were two for 13, which <laughs> not surprised by that because no. that happens way more than the normal. So, yeah. Yeah. um, but yeah, let's first talk with obviously the main story and that's, uh, yeah. Kate McNamara getting hurt and, you know, hate to say this, but it, it almost felt like something like this was going to happen. I obviously never would wish it, never want it. And I'm, you know, it sucks, but like, man, like he just looks so 
fragile out there this entire year with that quad strain. I mean, that whole thing disrupted everything back, what, on August 12th. And at the time, you know, right away it looked bad. And then it was like, oh, no, he will be fine. But it definitely has lingered this entire year for him. And it's definitely his performance has been affected by it. I don't know how much better he would have been if he was 100%, but I know for a fact he would looked a lot better this year if he was 100%. And um, obviously that happens, and he's out for – I mean, well, they don't – they haven't really said, but judging from the injury, because you and I both, like, at the time, like, we knew immediately, like, oh, boy, that did not look good. Like, the way he yeah. just kind of went down on his own – Yep. and non-contact like it to me looked like probably an ACL injury which sucks because it was on his other knee so now he has now torn an ACL on both knees that's not good especially because when you tear an ACL you, your chances of re-tearing it is more likely so yeah Kate's just like at this point probably just kind of an injury prone quarterback and he and like I said he's very fragile and you just, I don't know. You just felt like it was like, it, it almost felt like it was going to happen at some point, yeah. which really sucks. Yeah, it, it did. It felt inevitable, really. It, it, this whole year, you just mentioned it. You know, I know we didn't do a lot of design stuff with, with him, with rollouts and play action and QB sneaks and stuff like that. But the fact that we didn't do that, I think said a lot, right, about his injury is we were yeah. trying to prevent, you know, s- the worst possible thing happening, which is either further hurting his quad or something worse. And, you know, there's been a couple of times this year, give it, get, you know, granted that Penn state game where he, he got the first down on the scramble, but you could tell he just, he looked, he looked yeah, not was, healthy on that run. No. It, he kind of pulled up. He looked gimpy. Like it, it just, it just didn't look like a, a, a QB healthily like, running the ball like a, no. a healthy i'm not even talking like a dual threat but just a healthy quarterback that can semi run probably would have got more yards on that play than like he did because like he had so much open grass but once again he was so limited he oh. couldn't run so like all he got was like 10 yards which could have maybe been even longer run right and so i i, I agree with you it it it's almost like we didn't want to say it because we didn't want it to, to come true or or for it to to ultimately happen and and, you know, sure enough, he, he scrambles, you know, he's in backed up in his own end zone. He, he gets kind of flushed up through the middle of the pocket there and he kind of gave himself up. And I said to you, I'm like, right away, we both looked at each other and I'm like, okay, he either got tripped up by the turf or he just gave himself up because yeah. that didn't look like he didn't get touched. And sure enough, he was kind of face down in the on the field and and obviously in a lot of pain. So at that moment, you just kind of knew like shit, it happened. And I'm not going to lie. I told you, it was like, it was the biggest like gut punch right there. It, it was yeah. because it was at the beginning of the game of, of all things, right? Like we had just went down the field, granted, wish we would have scored a touchdown, but we got three points. We looked really, really good on offense there. That first drive, which we were waiting to finally see, um, and Cade was throwing the ball around. It looked really good. And then the second possession happens and it's like, fuck, you know? So yep. um, very, very unfortunate. And and obviously I think the biggest thing for me is like, yeah, we're going to miss, miss that leadership, you know, on the field, the intangibles, the kind of that winner's mentality. I think it'll be, be tough to, to get back, but obviously, you know, we'll, we'll get into how Deacon looked and how we feel about that going forward. But yeah, obviously at the moment it was a big gut punch. Yeah. I think like for me, like, and I I'd rather obviously have Kate out there than, than Deacon just because of the experience factor. But at the same time though, like when we we're just talking about how limited he was and who knows what percentage he was at, like injury wise, was he at 70%, yeah. 80%, but definitely limited. Like, and you mentioned, like we couldn't run simple things on our offense because of his injury, because of his quad. Yeah. we couldn't do a QB sneak. And how many times, especially Iowa football, because it seems like we are, we are always short of the first down. We're always a third down and two, third down and one, like always. Yep. Yep. And how important a QB sneak is in our offense, because it usually works. Like, especially if you have a six foot three, six foot four quarterback and like Deacon Hill, for example, you can run that on like every third down and one, even a third down and two. You couldn't do that with Cade. No. We couldn't do any bootlegs with Cade. We couldn't do any rollouts with Cade. And so, I mean, that's a and lot what of did our you offense. See from the first play, it was a rollout. It was a rollout. With Deacon Hill. Yep. So, yeah. 
uh, I was listening to John Miller's podcast this morning and he quoted like some, I don't know, like someone said this, he said, you, you can't miss something you never had. Why do I still feel so bad? And, and what he was referencing is like, you know, it sucks with Cade, but like, it's not like Cade was doing very good this year anyways, but no. you know, it still sucks. Don't get me wrong. And and he kind of mentioned right. that too. He doesn't want people to think like, like, Oh, it's, it's fine right. now. Like, we're you know, he, yeah. Cause we're not, we're not better off, but it's no. one of those things where it's like at the end of the day though, it sucks, but it's like, he, how I much, mean, how much worse are we really with? It, and and, yep. And yes. exactly. Do you look at Cade's numbers? I mean, they weren't oh. that great. And it's and I really think it's because of the injury. I don't think yeah. he's just magically worse. way worse yeah. than what he was at Michigan. I mean, he did have better talent around him, so maybe he was a little bit better at Michigan in, in the play calling. But I still think the injury affected him a little bit. But still, once again, though, like his his stats this year, we compared it on the last episode with Petrus last year. And, and Petrus yeah. had him beat on everything but touchdowns through the first four games. So – how much are we missing? Like, yes, we're going to miss, like you said, his leadership, his, his experience. Um, you already know with Deacon, if he starts the rest of the year, I guarantee you every single game, he'll have a couple interceptions just because he seems like the type of quarterback that likes to throw, likes to like, you know, and he's just going to make dumb mistakes. A little bit like, more aggressive. Yeah. And, and not maybe read the field as yep. well. As maybe Versus like Cade. Yeah. So you already know that's probably going to happen. Um, yeah. But other but than that, though, it's like happening a little bit. It, with you're Cade. right. So 100%. And I, I said this right up when we got back to the year tailgate last night after the game con. I said, objectively looking at the game, because we did get a large sample size of Deacon Hill. He played almost four quarters, right? Three and a half quarters or more. So objectively looking at how he played, I couldn't tell that there was a major drop off from him in there compared to a... 50% no. health wise, Cade McNamara. I really couldn't besides that one interception. You're right. That wasn't a good, that wasn't a good throw. And he had a couple other ones where could have been dicey, could have been picked off through into some double coverage, but it happens with a young guy that hasn't had the reps. I didn't feel that bad walking out of the stadium. Like I didn't feel like we are absolutely screwed. Yeah. I didn't have that feeling. I don't know about you. No, I, I agree. You look at his stats. He was, 11 for 27, uh, one touchdown, one intercept. Yeah, one touchdown, one interception. But how many drop balls were there? Um, I count yeah. Nico, Nico definitely three, Seth Anderson one, and Caleb Brown one. So at least six. Deontay, Deontay three, right? Who did I say? You said Nico. Okay, yeah, Deontay, sorry. Deontay yeah. three, Caleb Brown one, and Seth Anderson one. And so Eric that's Hall one. Yeah, I think Eric Hall. I couldn't remember if yeah, I couldn't remember if that was when Cade that was still there Cade, or not. But yeah. So at least five drop balls. So you're looking at a little bit better of a sat line if they catch those balls. Now, like John Miller said this morning, it's one of those things where Deacon does throw it very hard. Receivers aren't really used to that. You know, they're used to Cade. You know, they're you know, when they're practicing, yeah. they're usually right. going with Cade. And so you go from like a little bit of a lighter throw to a bullet. Obviously, the timing's a little bit different. It comes at well, you faster. And so also, it's his first start. He's probably so juiced up and like the the emotion inside of him, the the energy. I mean, he probably is like kind of like his heart's probably racing. You know, yeah. the, the game is sped up, all that. Like, I'm sure he was that, that played a part into it too, I think. Yep. And and uh yeah, I agree with that. So you're looking at what like if, if, if some of those were actual catches, you know, he finishes 15 for 27, 100 and obviously probably a little bit more yardage, 130 to 140 yards, one touchdown, one interception. You just said, what's different? That's probably what Cade would have finished with, yeah. right? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, obviously that first drive looked really good, but once again, it seemed like this entire year, the first drive has always looked good with scripted plays. Like who knows like yeah. the rest of the game, how we would have looked. So like stat wise, like how much different, are we with, with Deacon? Now I will say the one thing with Deacon that like I noticed last night, I don't know if I mentioned this to you and maybe once again, this is his first time. Like you can't really knock him for it. He did do it. He, he locked on receivers. Like he, he would snap the ball and he would immediately lock on a guy. And you can't really do that because especially when teams play zone, they're watching the quarterback's eyes. And if you're locking onto one receiver, you're going to throw a lot of interceptions that way. 
So once again, like that's something that like now that he's a starter that they're going to have to work on that this week. And as the weeks go on, if he's going to be the definite starters, you can't lock on to receivers. You got to be able to, and Kay did a good job of like being able to scan the field. (laughs) Um, And so that's something he has to do. Petrus was not good at that. Remember Petrus was the same way. He locked onto receivers a lot. So you just can't do that. Um, I thought he, for how big Deacon Hill is, thought he did a pretty good job at times maneuvering around the pocket. He stepped up that one play. I didn't think like he was like, I thought, you know, I was just envisioning like, oh boy, here's another statue, which he kind of is. But I thought he was, he did a little bit better job of like, at least kind of getting around the pocket versus like a Spencer Petrus. Yep. Kind of reminded me of, uh, like, honestly reminds me of Nate Stanley. And if he can, <laughs> if he can be anything like Nate Stanley, I mean, I, I know I, I've had my, you know, I've always said like Nate Stanley would, I, I don't think he was like great, great, but he was really good for us. And yeah, you know, if, oh, if he can know, replicate anything of Nate Stanley, like what, we'll, uh, I mean, that we'll take that every, every day of the week. So yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how he plays this next week. Because once again, now that you're the actual starter, yeah, there's going to be a little bit more pressure. You're going to be thinking about a little bit more as a week, as a week goes on versus like, sure. you have no, you, you can't think about it because you're, going from not being in the game, not thinking you're even going to have a snap this game to, oh boy, I have to go out there. And so it's so fast. And like, you don't really have time to really think about like what could go wrong. And you have all these things in the back of your mind. Now that you're the actual starter going into like a game, going into a week, like things could be a little bit different. So I'm anxious to see how he looks next week. I'm anxious to see how we play now with him. Like what, how our offense because I do think we're going to see a lot more bootlegs. We're going to see a lot more rollouts with them because we're actually have a guy that is healthy. So, yeah. The other thing I just, in general with the injuries, it's like, my God, are we just cursed on offense with injuries? It just seems like kind of feels that way. A break. You yeah. Get your break, man. Luke Lachey. Cade now. Caleb Johnson, Jazzy and Patterson. Yep. It's, it's just like, Give, and, give the guy something to work with. My yeah. God. And, and now, now with, with <laughs> obviously Cade out, having kind of a younger Deacon Hill, it's pretty important to get those two running backs back. Like we need a healthy Caleb yeah. Johnson. We need a healthy jazz because, because the, well, and I'm not saying the run game would have been a whole lot better, but it would have been, I mean, like LaShawn Williams can't do it all. No. Or, yeah. Like he can't do it all. And and those other guys that are behind him, I mean, they're just so young right now. It's like, you're just throwing them into an impossible situation. You, yeah. You can't really expect those guys who are both true freshmen to be able to just do what they did against Western Michigan. Like, no, it's just not going to happen. LaShawn Williams. And like you said, I think it's proven that LaShawn is not really a every game starter. Yeah. He's not a bad running back, but I, no, he just, I, I don't know. He's just not running back one material in my no. opinion. Right. And, and and that's why the run game is going to be important going forward now with a backup quarterback. The problem is it never really got going when we had a starting quarterback. So teams are really going to do the same thing Michigan State tried to do yesterday. Again, just continue yes. to stop the yep. run and force now a young backup quarterback to have to make the plays to win the game. It gets it gets tougher for the offense. That's for sure. Yeah. But I, I, I just think, like, looking at it, like I said, looking at it objectively, and I know it's Michigan State, and I know it's one game, I felt a lot better coming out of that game than I did when I initially saw Cade go down. I yeah. can say that. Well, pretty, pretty I, I will say this, and I don't know if it – and I, I haven't watched Michigan State this year, and they've had any injuries, but I know going into the year, like, their defense wasn't their problem. Right. Like, they actually didn't have a so bad their defense. Front, their front seven is pretty good, dude. Yeah, so – the linebackers, their D line, they're they're aggressive, they're it, active. Yeah, it's not like we this happened against Western Michigan. Deacon Hill looked decent right. against like a West, like you know he played a Big Ten team that yeah. yeah isn't very good, but their defense isn't bad. So I don't know. And we'll see. Apparently, their kicker and punter are goaded because guy hits a record fifty eight yard field goal in Kinnick. I don't know if you heard about that, but that's a record. So of course it happened against us. Against us, uh, yeah, yeah. We can't. I mean, and then their punter numerous times pinned us inside the 10 yard line, just absolutely kicking darts down there. And I'm like, yep, uh, here but, we go. It always seems like the away team's got amazing special teams. I don't know why. Oh, uh, but, but when it mattered most, he, he completely it, melted. It, he yeah. had that shank that led to a field goal. And then he had, well, I don't know if it was really his fault. Oh, I mean, he just punted it, but I, their punt right. returned. I mean, I don't know what they were doing on that, which we will right, right, we, right, right. we might as well just get into that now because I was gonna say let's wrap the offense up. We'll talk more about the offense yeah. on the later episode uh coming out, you know, on Thursday. 
But yeah, let's switch to the defense of special teams. Let's start with the special teams. Let's start with Cooper DeGene, who he's just such a playmaker. And obviously for us, it feels even better because he's kind of from where we are from, uh, yeah. about 45 minutes north of our hometown. So uh, we kind of knew going in, like we, we knew about him already in high school and how good he was at OABCIG, the alphabet school. And, uh, so we, we kind of had a feeling like this dude's going to be a stud. Now, did we know like, okay, obviously there's a big transition from yeah. Iowa, especially in the, you know, in like the North Northwest, there's not that many good athletes. Small, yeah. yeah. Like how is he going to transition from that to, mm-hmm. you know, big 10 and, and D one, but boy, like just absolutely. I mean, he's such an athlete and that punt return was incredible. I think we knew like the minute he caught the ball, he had so much green space, but we I don't think we were expecting a, a touchdown. No. We were just like, okay, kid 20 yards and then 15 to 20. It kind of looked like that was gonna happen because like he was about to get tackled by two defenders, and I, I don't know how he got out of it, got out of it, and the rest is history. Yeah. I he, you you I watched the replay and and you know, go to Twitter if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's pretty much everywhere, but you you hear the crowd like screaming when he gets the ball because of how much space he really had in front of him. So it's you knew, like great. you said, it was, there was going to be some sort of decent return yeah. minimum. And yeah, he goes to the left, splits two defenders, gets a block and yeah, the rest is history. He scores a touchdown and changes the entire game in a blink yeah. of an eye. Really? Really? It one does game. because if he doesn't score there, we're almost in field goal range. We kick a field goal, but once again, though, like they could still go down the field and kick a field goal, and right? They so like been moving up and down the field on yeah. our defense. Here's yeah. a petition for Cooper DeGene. Can we see him <laughs> on a few <laughs> possessions on offense? Like, and I'm being serious. Like, I, I, I know, I know I, everybody I, talks I, about it, and it's never going to happen under Kirk. Right. But you can't tell me, especially now, because I feel decent at the cornerback position with Deshaun Lee and Jamar. I'm not saying I don't like. I still want him to play defense, but if there's a few possessions a game. Yeah. Can we put him out on offense? Um, do a wildcat with him where, you know, you have like Caleb Brown who comes in motion. You, you get either well, handed off does. to Caleb. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, Cooper Jean just runs it down and who knows what's going to happen. It yeah. seems like with Cooper, a two yard play ends up being a 20 yard play with him. Right. So yeah, here's a secret. He played quarterback in high school, so he can throw it too. And and I was just gonna say that you could you could honestly, if you were very creative offense, unfortunately we're not, you could <laughs> add a couple plays in there, a little wrinkle where he throws it to keep kind of the defense because that's the problem with Wildcat is it gets every so... it's a run. Like everybody knows it's a run play, but you have to kind of at least have a few plays where you pass. Yep. But if you don't do Wildcat, put him out at wide receiver, do a do a running or a receiver screen with him. Do a jet sweep uh, and end around with him. Do something. Doesn't have to be where he goes out for a 15 yard drag route or whatever. It could be those simple things where like he catches the ball right at the line of scrimmage. You never know what he's what's going to happen with him because he's such a playmaker and he's so athletic. You you not only saw that on the punt return, you saw that on the interception in the back of the end zone. Yeah. He looked like a wide receiver catching the touchdown yep. from Michigan State over the shoulder, like. The guy, you just get get the ball to him, and he will make a play. Yeah. You're going to get positive yards with Cooper DeGene, and I'm not saying you do it 20 times a game. Just the threat of him in, of him out there out there is enough to, I think, throw a defense off completely. Even if you have him out there, but he doesn't even do anything, right? He's they have cool. to, yeah they they have to focus on him because they know how much of playmaker he is. I'm just saying, like, why? I, I mean, you have a lot of drives every game. Why can't yeah. two or three drives a game? So it's not even that many drives. No. We see him out there for a few plays. I, I don't know why that's too much to ask. Now, if we were like desperate at corner, I'd be like, no, because we need him. Like sure. we can't afford for him to get hurt. But we're not really desperate at corner anymore. We're like, we could afford for him to go play a couple series on offense. That's just my, would, but it's I never going to happen. If we're so. not desperate on offense, then don't do it. We're desperate on offense. Like we need production wherever yeah. that may come. It doesn't have to be so traditional with Iowa. I, I yeah. don't, you know, you've seen it at other places where guys, when they're as athletically talented as him, they they'll get him the ball no matter what. So yeah, um, I, so, I mean, I, that's why they have him at the return game. They know how, how electric he is. Kirk talked about it. I truly wonder how many other programs would do something for him. I mean, I don't know if every, I mean, cause 
no. who knows how many programs would, but there would be programs out there, coaches yes. out there that know like how good he is and they would find ways like, Hey, let's get him to play a couple offense. Like let's Could get him you out imagine there. him, him trotting out on the field on an offensive possession, how just like insane the crowd would be in Kinnick. If it was like, like last, last night. It w- yeah. Yeah. Like, well, either- even if he didn't do anything, and I know we're 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 talking about something that is a pipe dream. I get it. It's just our I, we talked about it last night, and and we we brought it up at kind of the tailgate last night when we got back, and a lot of people agreed. They're like, you know, we we don't hate that idea. They would have to figure something out uh, uniform wise, though, because both him and Caleb Brown uh, oh. wear the same number. So one of those two guys would have to switch numbers. Once again, this is all just like we wishful thinking because it's never going to happen under Kirk or Brian, but something that would be cool. Let's go to the defense quick. Um, another game where like we give up a lot of yards or it seems like we do and just doesn't look great. But at the end of the day, it's like, wow, we only gave up nine points. Technically, I know they scored 16, but that was on that, you know, the yeah. fumble. Nine yeah. points. They didn't even yeah. score a touchdown by their offense. Yet it felt kind of like a bad defensive game. It just kind of goes to show like where we like expect the defense. And like, even when they do good it, or like just a, maybe a little bit below good, it doesn't feel that way, but it's like, yeah. wow, like we only gave up nine points. What is there to bitch about? But <laughs> uh, so I just saw, I mean, I just, that was like my take on the defense is just another game where, yeah, you know, we gave up yards, but we didn't give up points. Ben, but don't I think break. Our standard is so high for this defense, and I think when we see even them kind of moving up and down the field or converting a fourth down, a couple third downs, like deep third downs too, like it, it was just kind of like demoralizing. And you're you're kind of like, how is this happening? But yeah, yeah, when you when you objectively look at it after the game, and you're like, okay, yeah, nine points three field goals, one of them being a 58 yarder, like, come on, like what, how you I, can't play much better than that. No. So, so yeah, you take away that 58 yarder, they had six points. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, and I, I think the other thing, Colin, and I, I thought about this, it, I think at least for me, it's almost like I look at it and I'm like a little slightly, at least during the game, like disappointed with us giving up so many yards and then moving up and down the field. And I, maybe it's just, my own brain not real like it's so it's so bad compared to like how our offense is doing like i guess i don't know how to explain it in the best way but it's like because our offense is so bad it's almost like i feel like we should be able to do that and we can't i don't know if that makes any sense at all to you but um yeah i'm kind of confused right now i'm not going to lie <laughs> what i'm trying to say is with how our offense is so bad, it, it's like our defense. I don't know how to explain it. it I'll have to think about it in a different way and come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I I think I'm knowing what you're trying to get at, but I yeah yeah. I'll have, I'll have to put the words together some other time for you. Okay. Um. May, maybe on the next episode, you, hey, you'll have uh, a solid seventy two hours to uh, to think that, and then maybe maybe, maybe we'll time. That's not enough time. Maybe, maybe we'll start the next episode out, and that's that's what you can get to. Um, no, I, I, all I was going to say one last thing about the defense is wasn't it like in the second quarter, we looked up at the end zone. Well, this is when I was bitching how we, like, we don't have like something on the scoreboard that gives you like the total stats. Um, but then it showed and in, in, I think they were like over like 200 some yards. I'm almost positive. And I think it was like in the second quarter, they only, they finished with 349. So another game where like, we kind of, we make halftime adjustments and they come out and they don't do shit. I mean, I think they only maybe had a hundred yards in the second half, maybe a little bit more than that, but pretty damn good. Yeah, we made a lot of halftime adjustments. They, they, they had like ninety some yards rushing in the first half, which I thought was a lot. Um, they, they didn't do a whole lot in the second half. They really didn't. No. Yeah, they finished with one hundred fifty six yards rushing, so they only had like fifty. Which I thought their running back did pretty good. He was a very shifty running back. He finished with one hundred eight. Uh, total yeah. yards that um, what does it Carter I think his last name is so, um, but yeah I thought overall though hey a win's a win um, it wasn't pretty, but who expected to be pretty especially after K gets hurt like I think if you would told me before the game I already kind of maybe thought the game wasn't gonna be pretty but if you would told me K gets hurt the second drive like yeah it's not gonna be pretty, um, hell I probably thought like well we probably don't even win this game and so to walk out of Kinnick with the win. And, and seeing how bad the West is, like the season isn't lost. It, it kind of feels that way without Cade, 
but it's not. I mean, if we no. can do decent with Spencer Peters at quarterback, I mean, Deacon just can be average or just be, you know, make some plays here or there. Like, we'll be fine with our defense and special teams and with how bad the West is. So, obviously, the biggest game is in two weeks. That game really scares me. Um, I'm going to have to see – a really good performance next week against Purdue for me to have any confidence in that Wisconsin game. But I don't know. I'm to the point where like I texted, you know, my two brothers where it's like at this point, like the season's kind of with all these injuries, it's like, it's to the point where it's like, yes, like I'm going to be like upset when we like do bad lose, but it's like at the same time, like let's just see how it plays out and let's just have fun, you know, along the way. It's kind of where I'm at with this team. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of there too. Like I hinted at that when I talked about the amount of injuries that are on this offense. It's like it is what it is at this point. Yeah. If we go out there and we over overperform, then hell yeah, great. I'm all for it. If we fall short of our goal of getting to a Big Ten championship, or you know, obviously I don't think we're necessarily going to win it after the Penn State performance, but and with all the injuries now, but if we can get there, we can overachieve then great. If we don't, then yeah, it is what it is. Like I, yep. I'm not, I'm not going to be unrealistic about the situation. I mean, we didn't already have that great of an offense and it doesn't help when everyone else is injured. So yeah. Yeah. I think, I think just let, let's see what we have in Deacon Hill, put him, try to put him in the best position to win and, and, and manage these games and get us, get us to some extra, some more victories, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But I yeah, think I, this, agree. I think that Wisconsin game, I'm not like I'm not putting too much stock into that anymore. No. I, I, and we'll obviously talk about the Purdue game, but that Purdue game, like I know Illinois is not good, but that you know, they they've won 44 <laughs> 16 yesterday. Like, yeah, no, they put up a lot good, of points. Man. It's gonna be tough. I mean, like, you know, Purdue's gonna put up some points against us, and like yeah. it's gonna be a tough game. Like, I I'm like I said, I'm I'm anxious to see how we play against them because like I said, it's gonna tell a lot of like for me, confidence wise going into the Wisconsin game because I think Purdue their schedule is just brutal. I mean, you go look at their schedule. Uh, it's like, it's been tough game after tough game. I don't They're think like the hardest schedule in the big 10, don't they? Y- yeah. Like I'm actually going to it right now. Fresno state, Virginia tech, Syracuse, Wisconsin, Illinois. Like you can't really get much harder than that. Like I know yeah. Virginia tech isn't good, but like that was on the road. Syracuse yeah. isn't a bad team. Fresno state's not a bad team like they're not like this yeah. Purdue team, like even though they're two and three, I think they're a lot better than what their record is simply due to the fact that their schedule is really tough. So it's gonna be a tough game. I'm glad it's at home because honestly, if that game was like at Purdue, especially like this will be like Deacon Hills, like first official start. Yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I would not see it happening for like a win. So at least it's, at least it's at home, but yeah, we'll talk more about that game. Um, on Wednesday night for the Thursday episode. So anything else? We good to go? V- I mean, I think that's it. I think we just got to, at this point, you know, it, like I said, it is what it is. We just got to, I guess, be positive. Obviously, we're still we're still invested in the season. Like you said, the season's yep. not over. The season's not lost. You know, the players are going to go out and try to, try to still do what they do. So yeah. you know, we'll see what we have next week with Deacon Hill. And and going all the way back to what I said right away, that's why last night's game was so important that we won because I think it would have – the locker room – I don't know. It's just like after K yeah, gets no. hurt and then we lose, yeah. it's like – We would be sitting on here very uh, – a completely yeah, it's different like mood. This, okay. Yeah, so yeah. that win was just so big. That, just so to big. keep the confidence at least going a you little saw bit. It with so. the players. They, they – I mean, I think they really wanted it. Yeah. Not, not, not only for – like Cade, but obviously just they still believe that they they can yeah get to a they have a shot yeah. so one last thing I just very quick what i did like the last night is we at least targeted the wide receivers a little bit more I, i'm yeah. glad about that like i know it wasn't pretty they dropped a lot of balls and it could have been better but like at least we were targeting them a little bit more and, and i don't know maybe deacon hill likes targeting the wide receivers more than Cade does because like it kind of seemed like that's what his he'd rather throw to them that seemed like than over the tight end so Maybe yeah. that's good to, you know, at least good to see. That was just one of another observation. So, yep. um, but other than that, I'm just looking at anything else. I, yeah, I think we covered everything. Um, that will do it back to watching some football, some Thursday or some, uh, afternoon yeah, games I can, I can be happy. The Vikings finally got a win, uh, after, after a brutal three, Oh, and three start. So 
I can enjoy the rest of my day. Turn, and- turn it back up. Yep. Yeah. It, it, although I have Kirk Cousins fantasy, so I was not I was not very happy. He only put up 15 points. It needs to be a little bit better. But he was number one going to the game, so I, I can't complain. Say, he was doing. He's, yeah, yeah, he's he's been doing good this year. So he's a fantasy stat monster. Yeah. If I, I wish I had him and Justin Jefferson, that would be a, a great duo. So, well, that will do it for this episode. Uh, we'll be back later this week. Until then, have a good week and go Hawks.